At this very moment, when I'm recording this video, this is hands down the best party gaming PC that you can build right now in 2020. I've been building computers for over 15 years now, and the PC you got in front of you, if I wanted to build a gaming PC in 2020 and I had about a thousand dollars to spend, this my friends is what I would spend it on. If you want to be able to enjoy ray tracing, maybe you're waiting for Cyberpunk 2077, or the upcoming Call of Duty, or heck who knows, maybe even Fortnite gets ray tracing support in the future. The point I'm trying to make here, if you care about ray tracing at all, Nvidia is currently your go-to and while AMD is on the verge of releasing their brand new RDNA 2 based graphics cards with hardware accelerated ray tracing, which I have been reporting about, right now for ray tracing, we want to turn our focus to the green team. However, if you don't care about ray tracing, I would instead recommend you to snag the RX 5700. Therefore, I decided to make it two configs for you guys. Whether you care about ray tracing, or not. Uh, anyway, this PC will cost you around $900 and it will perform excellent in games in both 1080 and even 1440p in a lot of games. I have running benchmarks in total of 9 games and if you want to go there right now, you find the timestamp for that down in the video description. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to Orbean Hardware. My name is Robin. I'm your Swedish host with bad posture and poor accent. In this video, yeah, we're gonna talk gaming computers and PC builds. Now, if you want to check out the PC part mentioned, everything is listed down below. So at CS in 2020, VGA went out and said that they, they were actually gonna drop a new graphics card called RTX 2060 Ultra KO. And yes, KO stands for knockout. And to any contender willing to step in, VGA will respond with a one-two punch. Very nice. Now the cool thing about this card, except for the red gloves, is that they have managed to take the GPU that originally sits inside the RTX 2080, scale it down, and, and give it the level of performance uh, of the RTX 2060. They also managed to put a pretty nice cooler on it and they made it very affordable and currently this is selling for 299 US dollars making it one of the cheapest if not the cheapest RTX card available on the market. And in case you don't care much about ray tracing, uh, spending about $30 more you can actually snag the RTX 5700 which actually performs a bit better however it also cost about $30 more. Everything is however not bells and whistles, the downside is that it's not ray tracing ready and that's definitely something that you want to have in mind. Also, I've seen your comments guys, plenty of people has actually been affected of a weird black screen and other random uh, breezes and bugs with graphics cards from AMD and this seems to be related to the graphics card driver. Now, I want to stress the fact that I've only encountered one random black screen once from my time testing the RX 56 600 and if I know this was a wider problem I would not have recommended this card at all however this is clearly a problem with a lot of people being affected and therefore I want you to be aware of this AMD is actually working on a fix and I'm going to keep you guys informed in this matter anyway we are gonna look at both cards and how they perform a bit later in this video but yeah without any further ado let's look at the processor coming in at around 175 US dollars this is one of the best if not the best price and performance CPU right now and it spells AMD Ryzen 5 3600. So third gen Ryzen, AMD did a fantastic job here with Sand 2 and the shiplet design. Wow, <laughs> what a brilliant idea. 7 nanometer allows for a denser ship allowing more cores and higher clock speeds and IPC than ever before. And when I started thinking about making this $900 PC based on the feedback from you guys, picking the 3600 yet again felt like a no brainer. This processor is selling for $175, it's a 6 core 12 thread part with a clock speed of 3.6 gigahertz. And I was as surprised as you guys were when I started testing this and it turns out in some games CSGO being one of them, it's actually not much lower than an Intel Core i9-9900K which is a $500 processor. So being able to get this much gaming performance for this compelling price tag makes this a winner for anyone I want to build a budget gaming PC right now. Yeah, the Ryzen 3600 also comes boxed with a cooler and this cooler actually does a great job of keeping the temperatures in place. It's not too loud and it gets the job done. I was however contemplating whether to include a third party cooler but I decided to save that money and spend it on better components instead. The stock cooler definitely, yeah, gets the job done. Moving on to the motherboard coming in at just over $120. This is the Asus Strix B450 
B450F. Now, there are several reasons why I picked the B450F. Now, for one, aesthetically, I think it looks great. The black finish alongside the illuminated ROG logo gives you that nice, you know, gaming touch, and it's not too much in your face, so to speak. It also got a very solid uh, and a very comprehensive uh, UFI and a very solid fan utility software, making fan setup and fan curve setup a piece of cake. It also got some serious heat sinks over the VRMs. It got support for dual channel DDR4 with up to 4400 megahertz, plenty of ports such as a dual a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A. We got HDMI and DisplayPort. We got Gigabit LAN support for both Crossfire and SLI, and a very compelling audio ship with Supreme FX shielding with two built-in amplifiers. And on top of that, we're also getting two uh, M.2 slots, so you can install additional NVMe SSD storage later down the road if you want to. And overall, I think Asus done a very good job here. And that all said, if you need uh, onboard Wi-Fi, that is one thing this board is lacking. And because this was something that I was specifically looking for when I was building this PC, I went for this Aorus X470 Gaming 5. It basically got the similar specs as this Asus board with the addition of the onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 support. And this adds a bit to the price tag and if you don't need these features, there is no reason, you know, you pay extra for it. Anyway, both motherboards are linked up down below if you want to check them out. But yeah, for $120 for the Asus board, it is worth every penny. Yes, let's take another look at the graphics card. So this shouldn't come as a surprise. It is based on the Turing architecture and 12 nanometer. The RTX 2060 marks Nvidia's first introduction to hardware, enabled ray tracing features at an affordable price tag. Nvidia introduced the KO or the knockout at CES in 2020 because they wanted to give people a chance to enjoy ray tracing for a cheaper price tag. Based on the feedback, I think they did a pretty good job here, keeping the price down while not doing, you know, any bigger compromises. It's got a dual fan blowing on a thick uh, heat spreader covering two PCIe slots and a pre-installed backplate can be found on the backside and you're getting three years of warranty. Now, in case you don't care much for ray tracing, and in case you don't care much about ray tracing, uh, spending about $30 more, you can actually snag the RX 5700, which actually performs a bit better. However, it also costs about mind. Yes, you more. do not get those uh, fancy looking reflections you get from activating DXR and ray tracing. And this is something that you want to keep in mind if you're thinking about this card. But yeah, we're going to look at benchmarks in a few seconds. For RAM, I went with this dual 8 gig kit from Ballistics. And although this isn't B die memory sticks, as far as I'm where, which are known for being particularly good with Ryzen, I am still able to overclock these to 3200 MHz up from the 2667 MHz they are rated for, so I highly recommend those, very stable and not too pricey either. And in case you want to upgrade later down the road, you got that option also. Jumping over to the SSD, I picked up this 960 gig drive from Kingston, it is cheap and fast and keep in mind in case you're planning on having many games installed, I recommend opting for at least 2 terabyte, or 1 terabyte will get you pretty far as a start. As for the power supply, I went with a 650 uh, watt unit from Corsair. It's got 80 plus bronze efficiency and you're getting a bit of extra headroom here in case you want to upgrade the system with a beefier graphics card later down the road for example. It is also CMI modular, meaning that you won't have to deal with you know heaps of cables you don't have any use for. And this makes cable management and cable routing so much easier when installing this in your PC case and speaking of the case now in the 15 years time of building computers I I actually never stumble across anything like this case before I guarantee you guys Lian Lee is losing money on this case it is called LAN Cool 2 it's actually born to perform it is powerful it is multifunctional and it's well crafted and normally you would take these words with a grain of salt especially when you see these words presented on screen like this but guys, please hear me out. This case delivers on everything it promises and it over delivers and it will blow your mind. 
Now, for $95, you get tempered glass on hinges on two sides, and there is no ugly screws here. And to open the side panels, you first have to open up the side shroud, and everything is being held up in place on strong magnets. And by the way, pretty much every part of this case is made of aluminum, and because both side panels it's got tempered glass, Lee Ali uses cover plates to get rid of all the visible cables. And I'm gonna be honest here, I actually didn't spend much time here, but yeah, look. Look at the results, the front also got some well needed RGB and the case even comes included with 3 120 fans, yes that's right we got 3 120 fans here running in 1300 RPM and something to have in mind you want to connect these to your motherboard and you want to set them up uh, with uh, individual fan curves, every air intake also have dust filters and you got support for uh, up to a 360 radiator in the front and a 240 on the top, it doesn't get better than this and again it cost you 95 bucks guys this is a steal i don't know what else to say anyway time to see how this pc performs in games and i decided to run test in 1080 as well as 1440p now for battlefield 5 testing i was using dx11 for amd and dx12 for nvidia simply because nvidia for some reason performed better in dx12 and amd did better in dx11 and as we can see from the testing the rx 5700 is slightly faster in pretty much every game I've tested and to be more specific the RX 5700 is about 8 to 12 FPS faster on average for the same price tag. This in my opinion makes the decision pretty easy however it all comes down to whether you care about Nvidia's current exclusive features. I want to stress the fact that ray tracing is not an Nvidia exclusive feature and we know that AMD is planning on releasing ray tracing graphics cards in the near future. Anyway guys as you can see I decided to do two builds or two configs and both are priced around 900 and 950 dollars and you find links to all parts down in the video description below. Now in case you're on the hunt for a new monitor I actually made a video going over some of the most affordable ones to consider and you find that video in the link down below. In case you got any questions I'm happy to help you out. Now watch either of these two videos for more content and I will see you guys over there. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. And you guys have a fantastic day, alright?